Hi everyone, it's Peter Zellum's Greeny Flix Adventure and welcome to another video. Today's video is about film photography, in fact medium format film photography. I don't know whether you've noticed in my studio, the Bronica. Yes, this is a Hasselblad look-alike, uh, made in Japan. I bought this probably about 30 years ago or so, maybe even longer. 35 years ago, 40 years ago. <laughs> and uh, the last time I used it was probably about uh, 20 years ago, maybe 25 years ago, a long time ago. Anyway, let's uh, do a bit of a review of this camera. Now going through my archives and my, my stocks of stuff, photographic stuff that I have, I did find some film and I've actually got quite a few rolls of this too. And it's uh, Fuji Chrome film. 100 ISO with a use by date of 2002. <laughs> so, 20 years old. What's the chances of this being any good still? but I know it can be processed, so I will get it processed. I will ask the processor, if it's 20 years old, do they need to extend the processing in some manner or form? Uh, the things I'm expecting that will change with the film is the color will change possibly, inconsistent, but anyway. Uh, so that's what I'll be photo, well, I'll be using this and uh, I'll set up something on this table here. What I'll be using to help compare the results will be my Nikon Z6 with the 24-70 f4s lens. Now the lens that's uh, on the Bronica is a Nippon Kogaku Nikkor, or yeah, Nikkor P lens. It's f 2.8 and 75 millimeter. Now, when you take the 35 millimeter film versus the two and a quarter, so 60 millimeters by 60 millimeter film, then to compare the equivalent focal length, 75 millimeter focal length equates to about 50 millimeter focal length on a full frame camera. The f2.8 uh, aperture also equates to about an f2 as far as bokeh is concerned on the with a 50 millimeter uh, focal length on the full frame camera all right so that's our comparison so i'll take some close-up shots now it's a roll of 12 so i'll take 12 shots of a variety um again i'll try you know the thing about you know full format or medium format is detail. So I'll take some landscape shots, I'll take some portrait shots of myself, and uh, some close up shots. So this will focus down to about 60 centimeters. And uh, so we'll be able to, I'll do shots, the same shot with the camp with the Nikon full frame, as well as the same shot with the Bronica. Now, I'd have to break this up into two videos. The first one will be just how to operate this thing and then the second one, and I'll show you photographs that I'm taking because I'd be able to have a digital one obviously with the full frame and then when I get this back I'll get the processing lab to actually digitize these as well and then I might try and also copy these and digitize these myself just as a comparison to see how much how well I can do it compared to the lab all right, so the operation is, again, very much like a Hasselblad. I think it's a C500 or something like that, a model. You've got um, your, your shutter speed controls here, and it goes from one second right up to one thousandth of a second. X, I think, is for flash. And then uh, B also, which means you can actually just press the shutter, cable release, or your finger. That's your shutter there. Uh, cable release. And then you can just hold it down and take the shot. Now, um, then your winding crank is this one here. 
Now there's no film in there right now, so this won't actually activate the shutter or the mirror. It's a single lens reflex camera. Now what that means is that there's a mirror in there and when you take the shot, the mirror flicks up and the iris closes to whatever aperture you set and the shutter plane is in here, the curtain, shutter curtain. It takes the shot. So I can demonstrate this by taking the back off. There is a dark slide in here, which exposes the film cartridge to the rest of the body. And then if you can actually take the cartridge off by just putting the dark slide in, pressing that and it releases it. Have a little closer look here. So as soon as I take that off, I can actually wind the crank. You can actually see the curtain, the shutter curtain here, your top one and your bottom one. So I'm, I'm winding it forward. What I'll do is I'll select, uh, say, one second. I'll take the shot. Voila, you can see what happened there. So I'll do that again. And this time I'll put it on B. So I'll just hold my finger on there. And you can actually see the insides of the camera there. I'll look through there, you can actually see me. Can you see me? <laughs> Hello. And the mirror flicks up. And then that goes back down. That just goes on there. And that flicks on like that. You put the mirror up like that. Well, to, to look through the top, you look through the top here. And you focus with that uh, focusing ring there. And it moves the lens in and out. It's roughly in focus there. It's really hard to see, but... And then if you press that, you've got a magnifying glass. You can put your eye to it and you can see in greater detail. That folds down like that. That folds down like that. And that's it. Um, you've got your aperture ring here, so 2.8, right up to 22. When you load this, you can get rolls of 12 or rolls of 24. And here you can set it telling the camera whether you're using 12 or 24 shots. And you've got a frame counter there as well. So your shutter release is there, you can put a cable release in there. If you're shooting at a smaller f-stop, a larger f-stop number, which means you're closing down the iris, then you can do a, a preview as far as your depth of field through here. And you can stop it down. Obviously, if you do that, then you reduce the amount of light coming through. It's very hard to actually see. But, so you can just see it coming through like that. Um, I think that's it for buttons. It's really straightforward. You can attach to a tripod. Your flash sync cord goes in there. Flash sync should be somewhere around the 1 60th of a second. Yeah, that sounds about right. Don't know what the age is of this camera, but I imagine it's about 50 years old. But it's in good working condition still. I did do a bit of a clean up. Uh, I had to sort of dismantle this a little bit. Which wasn't too bad, I can go maybe make another video as far as how to dismantle all this and do a, give it a bit of a clean as well. Alright, so now the back, the film. We have to put in the film. I haven't done this for so long, so let's see how my memory banks go. Alright, so there you go, so I've got my dark slide in there. All prepared, that's fine. That flicks up and then we've got close and open. That opens up and then we can squeeze, pinch these two rollers here and then we can take the whole cartridge out. Okay, it only goes in one way. So we've got all the ratchet with the gear system here, gear system there for the film advance. Just put that aside for now. Okay, now we've got the, the take up spool, which is that one. Now normally when you've just um, used up a roll of film, all the film will be on there and then you would just take that out and that's the whole film, all the film would be wrapped in there, you take that to the processing lab to get it processed. Now you're grabbing a new film, it's got to be loaded on this side, so you've got to transfer the empty spool onto the onto the ratchet side here. Okay. 
and when I load the film it will be loading this way around there around there around there and then into that slot there and then you can wind forward like that a few turns and then you put it back in there let's give this a go all right this hasn't been opened it's it's oh it's 2002 so what does it say to be used by a certain date 2003 okay so used by the fourth month of 2003 mm. okay here we go now theoretically you can load this in daylight theoretically here it is the Fuji Provia Fuji film Provia load in subdued light <laughs> <laughs> it's not subdued I got bright lights here okay well that's what it says so I might have a bit of light coming in from the side so it'd be interesting to see whether that occurs or not all right so I'll take off that tag ISO 100 daylight that's a film okay all right so you can see the underside is there so so that goes around here around here so you can see I've taken it around there around there into the slot like so Okay, that's wound on properly. Okay, so that's good, that's good, that's good. I should be able to put that back into the back here. That goes there. Gears with gears, so the gears are down the bottom, the gears are down the bottom, and that just slides in like so. That's how simple it is. It's now loaded on. Put this back on. That's in. Can I wind? Oh yeah, I can wind it on now. Let's see what happens here. That's winding. That's winding. So it's going past the prep parts. And we're getting to one. It's on one now. <laughs> I think I think I've done it right. That is so exciting. I'm ready to take my first shot. So. Okay, so here's my setup. I've got some uh, items here sort of in the focus line here I've got a tape measure here so look my film planes about there the tape measure is at an angle so it's not giving me an accurate figure as far as distance is concerned but it's about 57 centimeters from the focal plane to the subject which is this here and then I've got some things in the foreground and some stuff there plus my television in the background there so that's gonna give me a fairly nice image okay so I'll take the shot with my I'll take the shot first with the Z6 here I'll set that at around the 52 I think that's what I measured it at I'll just put that here and my focus point will be this little dream catcher right here which is in line with the shelves and then we'll go from there so on the z6 i'm limited to f4 okay so that's my shot i've focused in here on the dream catcher which is nice we're looking at around the 580 millimeter mark on the tape measure in this setup. So I'll repeat the process with the Bronica now. Let's 
The framing won't be exactly the same, but be pretty close to the mark. I've already got a minimum focus, so I'm just moving the camera to and fro until I get the right focus. That looks about right. So the exposure that I had here was 1 15th at f4 at 100 ISO. It's 100 ISO. We're shooting at 2.8 and therefore the shutter speed should be 1 30th of a second. So that's what I'll do. I don't have the cable release with me. Take the shot as it is. Are we ready? Here we go. Right. Ah, okay. <laughs> There's a reason for the dark slide. So you don't take accident exposures. Okay, so we'll take the dark slide out. That will help. And let's take the shot. Whoa! How's that? So I'll be taking a quarter of a second exposure. And uh, a similar shot. Okay, here we go. I think I'll move the camera. This is why you need a cable release. Okay, I found my next location. It's here down by the beach. And I've already scouted with my Nikon. Um, came in, came here earlier just to have a look to see what was going on. All right, on a side note, I'm not entirely sure whether you noticed, but actually I do have a lot of peak design gear here. I've got these little anchors. So I can just um, remove these straps, remove these straps whenever I need to. So that's uh, easy to do. Get rid of the strap. I've got a Peak Design bag, a 300 litre top load, I'm not quite sure. 300 litre, anyway, there'll be some links. There'll be some links in the video. So you can see what bags I'm using here. There's anything else? Nothing else that I need in there, so that's good. It's good having this top access. It's easy to operate. Tripod just gets secured in here. Yeah, so tripod gets access, gets secured in there. That tether there holds it in place. That's easy to use. There's a the tripod. And then in here. I've got a GoPro, some mini tripods, you can access also the, the top here from the side and then here I've got the Bronica. My plan is to sort of frame up this area here with the Bronica and take that shot. So I've got some foreground here, some middle ground and also in the background of the clouds. This tripod has uh, all of the little bits and pieces so it's got a little mount here so you've got your hex keys allen keys ready to go so we just need to attach the base to the uh, Veronica okay that's locked in place take a shot with this camera similar view and see what sort of exposure I need so if I'm shooting f11 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 100 ISO that's about 125th of a second I'll just take that shot I've got a reference shot. It looks okay. This is a rectangular format. Where, so if I take a, two shots and I can stitch them together, that's what I'll do. 
Okay, two shots, I'm gonna probably stitch those together and see what it looks like. That's my reference shot. Take out the slide. Take the shot. That's it. Let's uh, choose another location now. Next location, okay, I'm here and we're photographing in that direction. We've got a surfer out there. So, how clear is that? Not very clear, okay. So that's what I'm seeing. I'm waiting for a good set of waves coming in. Get the surfer and then I'll take the shot. So you can just see him just out there. My next shot, okay, my composition is this area here. Um, I guess I'm going for all sorts of detail. Be interesting to see what sort of detail the medium format picks up compared to two shots stitched together with the Z6. Well, I guess I'll do the Z6 shot, Nikon Z6 shot first and get all the exposures right and then we'll do this one here Good to go. Okay, next location. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Maybe uh, a close-up of something at f2.8 on this. And that way the background will be all fuzzy and lots of bokeh. Just got to work out what's the close-up I'm going to do. There's bound to be something around here. I think that's it for daylight shots. Well, to end of this video, I'll just finish off with a few slides. These were taken with the Z6, so I should have similar shots or some similar shots with the Bronica as well. I'll continue to shoot the Bronica at a couple other locations, and then eventually I will get these the Bronica film process, the Fuji Chrome film process, and we'll see what sort of results we get. The Z6 produces really quite nice uh, photographs and after stitching a couple of these photographs together you can also see what they look like, both um, cropped in for some detail as well as the overall picture. If it's the first time to my channel and you haven't uh, subscribed already, please do subscribe, really appreciate that. And if you like the video, then give it a thumbs up, that's how you support the channel. The next video, or one of the next videos, will have the results of the Bronica and then I'll be able to compare the shots that were taken here with the Z6 with the Bronica. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers, bye.